Jay, let's shift across the country to across the country to Brooklyn. The Nets parted ways with head coach Kenny Axon in a difficult season married by injuries to star point guard Kyrie Irving. The Nets are currently 30 and 34, although they do sit in the seventh spot in the East and should make the playoffs barring a total collapse. So, Jay, if you was the Nets GM, who would you hire to be the next head coach? I'm going to just start. I got I to gotta get some of this stuff off my chest. I'm still I'm, – I'm a little – I feel bad for Kenny Atkinson, and I feel bad for a lot of these NBA coaches that this happens to. Do we not remember just a year or so ago – Dwayne Casey won coach of the year and got fired the very same year. Now, I get it. Now, I get it. They, Nick Nurse came in. They won the championship. That, that also could have been because you got Kawhi Leonard, a vice DeMar DeRozan. That we, we can't just ignore that. But, you know, some of these some of these coaches that get – I mean, you can, you can even talk about Mark Jackson. You know, Steve Kerr comes right in, and, you know, they have just instant success. But, man, it, it's hard. It's hard coaching the NBA – an NBA team – and especially when you bring in superstars, the expectations that come along with that. And and we all know, let, let's not kid ourselves. The NBA is a player's league. I mean, coaches, coaches in most sense, I mean, th- there are very few Greg Popoviches in this league that just have that type of cachet. And we look at the Spurs, we think of Greg Popovich. We look at most teams, we think of the superstar player. We think when we think about the Bucks, we think of Giannis first before we think of Boonoser. We think of the Clippers, we think of the Kawhi before Doc Rivers and so on and so forth. So with that in mind, this is a difficult situation. Uh, Kenny Atkinson, when I look at his time in Brooklyn, uh, his first his first couple of seasons, they were not impressive, but he didn't have a whole lot to work with. And but you look, you also look at that in the first three years, they improved every season. And then some of the development that he was able to uh, have with these guys. got You think about guys like Joe Harris and Jared Allen, Karis LeVert, and you see the progress that they made. And then D'Angelo Russell elevating himself to all-star status. And they make the playoffs. And they gave, they gave the Philadelphia 76ers a real good series last year. And even so this year, with, K, with no KD bringing him in, you had Kyrie Irving. So you thought at, at minimum – you would be, you know, above 500 and in the playoff race. And these guys, even though Kyrie played only 20 games this season, they're still, and even though they're six games or I think they're four games below 500 at this point, but they're in the playoff hunt. They're in the seventh seed right now, and uh, you know, it doesn't look like there's a team at the bo- in the the bottom half of the Eastern Conference that's going to catch uh, the Magic or the Nets. So uh, this is tough, and as I understand it, it's one of those situations where I think it truly was a mutual, you know, parting. I think Kenny Atkinson, I got to believe that he has some reservations about moving forward with this team. I don't know if he necessarily liked the fit of a Kyrie Irving. Um, And then you combine that with Kevin Durant. I mean, let's face it. um, These aren't two of the uh, most cheerful fellas that we've seen from time to time, especially Kyrie Irving. We talked about him Uh, multiple times this season and just some of the nonsense that tends to come out of his mouth. So, I mean, we got to pay attention to that. And, but, you know, moving forward, I would say this, um, this, this is a tough one. And if Sean Marks, I got to take great care and uh, making sure that we absolutely get this right. Because I mean, you didn't bring Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant in for nothing short of winning a title. That, that's the level of expectations that we have here. So, I mean, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about I'm thinking about a guy like Mark Jackson, who's had, had some success in this league. We know about his time in Golden State. Hasn't had a job since. Not sure why. I, maybe it's maybe it's some ownership. Just maybe he's not well liked by owners. But I, I got to believe he, if he wants to have another job in the NBA, I got to believe he's going to get one eventually. I think something that would be absolutely fantastic is if David Fisdale was to get this job and is able to take over this team. The Nets are a real team. They're not like the dudes over there in the in the, in the garden flopping around and we can't figure out what they're doing. With hold their- on, hold on. That, that, that team in the garden was put together to compete at a high level and, and maybe think about winning a championship. You heard the GM. 
I thought they were supposed to be highly competitive. We expected to be competitive. Came out there in that press car. What a joke. Yeah, J- James Dolan just eating it up like, yeah, I don't understand what's going on. Hey, Fisdale, get out of here. Okay. And then next thing you know, like later, they're both gone. The freaking frack up there. <laughs> hey, man. But hey, I-, I think David Fisdale, I, I think that uh, that's another situation where a coach has just been set up for absolute failure. I mean, this. I mean, we've we've seen Finsdale in this league. We saw what he did in Memphis. Been a was a great assistant in Miami for many years, and I think he's a guy that deserves another shot. But I mean, it's tough. And it, we talked about this. You made great points on this. I'm sure you'll get into it. It takes a special kind of coach to coach superstar talent. One of the names that always comes to mind is Phil Jackson, who can not only get the X's and O's down but he can manage personalities. And you talk about managing personalities. Woo! It's a fine line over here with KD and Kyrie. So, and Sean Marks, I would would just, for Sean Marks, the general manager, take your time. Don't be in no hurry. Take the the rest of the season. Don't let Jock Vaughn run this thing. The rest of the season, see how it turns out. And... I got to believe this is a decision and a hire that will get done in the offseason. Um, listen, uh, it, when it comes down to it, man, and you got two, first of all, you got Kevin Durant coming. And, and Kevin Durant, listen, most people think he's the best player in the world. Some think he's the second best. He don't drop no further than the fourth best on the worst list. Then you got Kyrie Irving. The best ball handler in the league, superstar. Um, both of these guys are mega stars. You do you know it's only seven players in the NBA that have a signature shoe that then came out with you know more than five pairs of a signature shoe, the signature shoe, and those two are two of the seven players. That tells you the magnitude of both of these players, the aura around these players. With that said, I'm of the I'm of the mindset of this. If you're going to bring in a coach, I, hey, we ain't got no time for the BS. It need to be somebody with a pedigree, all right? You got you got to have a resume. I don't want to hear what you did in college. I don't want to hear what you did with a bunch of B average players. I don't want to hear none of that smoke. Listen, I got all the love in the world for Fizdale. But Fizdale, when he coached superstars, he was an assistant coach. He was not a head coach. That goes to Eric Spostrom. Eric Spolstrom was the guy that coached LeBron and D-Wade and Chris Boss and, 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 and Ray Allens and everybody else. When So when I look at that, I, I, I it's one guy out there, it's the only name that comes to me that, that's out there that's probably ready for this spotlight or this job or this magnitude, and that's Tyron Lue. Say what you want about the guy, but the guy successfully coached LeBron James for three or the four years when he came back to Cleveland. Listen, LeBron, do you know how hard it is to coach LeBron James? You know how many coaches he got fired? Man, you better stop. He sent Tyron Lue to the hospital twice in four years. This ain't, let me tell you something. This ain't no easy casual stroll through the park. And what I hate is, is this is how you get the, the, the situations like Kenny Atkinson. Oh, man, he got that talent, man. He got that talent. Man, it's going to be a breeze. All he got to do is roll the ball out there. No, no, no. You said it. You need a guy that can do, he can manage personnel and hit the X's and O's. Listen, it's not a long list of them. You got, you got um, Chuck Daly is one guy I like to bring up when he was with the Bad Boys Pistons. Pat Riley when he was coaching the Showtime Lakers. And then... You know, Phil Jackson, when he was coaching that awesome 1990-era Bulls team that looked the dog on unstoppable when Jordan was on the court. Then he turned around and said, hold on, hold my coffee. Let me go and pull this in the 2000 with the Lakers. Like, man, I'm not saying the guy got to be Phil Jackson because there's only one Phil Jackson, but I'm saying the guy got to have a pedigree. That is why I come with Tyron Lue. You give me Phil's there, I don't see the pedigree. If you give me um, what's another name that was um Mark Jackson. Jackson. I like Mark Jackson, but when Mark Jackson was coaching Golden State, Steph wasn't Steph. 
Draymond wasn't Draymond. Clay wasn't Clay. Harrison Barnes wasn't even Harrison Barnes, to be perfectly honest with you. And he ain't even considered an upper echelon player. You know, and he wasn't on the team when KD joined. So he, he didn't show me the necessary management of superstars that I would like. I need a guy that can handle superstars. I need a guy that's proven. And that's why I go with Tyron Lue, because he's proven. Not to mention, hey, he got done doing his stint with Cleveland. He said, boom. Oh, by the way, that Cleveland team that had one Kyrie Irving on the team. So he didn't coach Kyrie before. He know he got to deal with Kyrie. And he didn't dealt with a player that, that asked for more than KD probably asked. KD, as sensitive as he is with the media and all this other stuff, he doesn't really strike me as a guy that's very, very needy once he gets on the court and play. Now, he done made it known. You're not going to call him out his name and stuff like that. But when he get on that court, he considered himself low maintenance. I consider him low maintenance because I haven't heard anything crazy from him on the court, just off the court. You know, burner accounts on Twitter, you know, all that mess. But that's what he do when he's bored. But on the court, he seems to be a pretty coachable, pretty likable guy on the court. And I think Tyron Luke can handle that. Um, so, listen, don't let listen, Sean Marks, how let your boy on here? No. I'm, t- I'm telling you right now. Don't bring no rooted poop. I don't have the resume coach in here. And then you're going to get that coach fired in a year and a half. And then you're going to get yourself fired. That's what's going to happen. Both of y'all are going to get the boot. You got away with this one. Accent out the door. You still got a job. That's fine. You better make sure your next coach can coach superstars. Because, buddy, Brad Stevens got away with one. He, he, Kyrie came and left, and Brad Stevens still the coach. It ain't too many of them type of um, opportunities out there. So you better get you a coach that can handle his business. Because if you don't get you one, you out the door with him. And that's the way I look at it. So Tyron Lue would be my, my choice. I uh, just want to throw one more name out there and – this one comes with a lot with question marks of its own, but Mike D'Antoni interest you at all for this job? Hey, he's got hey James Harden, Russell Westbrook, players coach, offense galore. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Listen, listen. If he comes, and then he, here's my problem with D'Antoni. Let me let me be fair because I don't want people to say, oh, he's just talking trash. Listen. Give me Dan Antonio championship moment. <laughs> he obviously don't have one. And part of the problem is he's never been interested in coaching defense. That's my problem. I'm sorry. But I mean, so, but hey, to that point, when we talk about if you want to coach with championship experience, and that would obviously probably lead you to Tyron Lue, because let's be real. If a coach has championship experience, he probably is not available. And you think about true, the guys true. that have. And you think about guys that have won titles. We're talking about Popovich. We're talking about Doc Rivers, Eric Spolstra, now Nick Nurse. Those those guys aren't available. So, I mean, if, if that if that's the criteria that's been set, then Tyron Lue absolutely is a logical choice. Now, I, I would caution you in this respect. Does Kyrie want Tyron Lue? Or is we just thinking because he coached – because we know the, the reason or part of the thing – Tyron Lue in Cleveland was Ty- Tyron Lue was LeBron's guy and we know how that thing ended in Cleveland we don't know nec- I don't believe we know necessarily if Tyron Lue was Kyrie's guy no true but Ty- I would say this Kyrie never said he had a problem with Tyron Lue Ty- a Kyrie thing was I don't want to be a Robin I want to be a Batman I don't want to be stuck here and then LeBron just bounced and then he just leaves the, the, the franchise in shamble, and I'm kind of here flapping in the wind here. That was his thing. Yeah. I've I never seen anything where he said, I don't like Tyron Lue. He wasn't my guy. He was LeBron guy. That is, but that's a good, fantastic point, and that's what we're going to find out here in coming days. Another guy I could maybe consider, but I put him in the same boat as D'Antoni, is maybe Dwayne Casey because – Listen, he's he's been in the Eastern Conference Finals. He never really got over that hump, but we did see he was able to get the Rosen and he was able to get Lowry. And he was able to get those guys together. Maybe he could handle that. But I, it, I mean, you know, but 
you, the, my only problem with Dear Tony is he don't coach defense and he just ain't done enough on the championship level. That, that's my biggest thing with him. If he had a just gave me something in the Western Conference Finals, something in the Eastern Conference Finals, I would be more willing to be like, yeah. yeah I remember that that uh, NBA Finals he was in and he – but I, I, that's I can't. A, yeah, your point on Dwayne Casey, that's, a, that's, that's another really good name. You know, the, the situation he's been put in Detroit has kind of been – that's been pretty bad. That'd be, that'd be a really interesting name because it'd be interesting to see if he could get it done – with the likes of KD and Kyrie, because when we talk about, you know, superstar duos, that is just, it's leaps and bounds with those guys compared to <laughs> that boy Bar Soap and DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> so, hey, but hey, an- another wild card in all this is a guy who takes this job. There's got to be, there's probably going to be some uncertainty to it because I don't care what I see in videos or, you know, rehab reports or whatever. It's an Achilles injury KD's coming back from. So we don't know what he's going to look like when he gets back. So that's just something. Because well, uh, this was the same KD we seen pop locking and dropping it in the in the locker room hallway before the game. He was driving, like, oh, could a guy with an injury like that do all that? And then he do one move to the goal, one single move to the goal, and boom, there we go. Yeah. So you're right. Like, you, you can – hey, I have seen a lot of videos of Ben Simmons shooting in the offseason. Tell me how that worked in the season. So oh, yeah. don't it? Yeah, don't even. We don't even need to go there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, hey, the, the Nets moving forward definitely gonna be a team to watch for next year, and them expectations will come back when KD comes back. So we'll see how it plays out.